everyone. Welcome to the Board of Select meeting for Monday, January 27th. It's a bit after 7.15 p.m., so we're ready to get going. Uh, first up on the agenda, we have a uh, consent agenda, which is the minutes of the meeting of January 13th. We have a request for a one-day beer and wine license from the Regent Theatre for a performance of Mission of Burma concert. It is not often that I re receive Facebook inquiries about license requests, but I have a number of Mission to Burma fans who wanted to know if I could get them tickets, to which I answered no. <laughs> um, and we have several reappointments. Board of Youth Services, Mary DeCourcy and Carlene Newell. Commission on Disabilities, Susan James. Uh, Conservation Commission, Eileen Coleman. Council on Aging, Sue Colhane. Historical Commission, Diane Schaefer. Open Space Committee, Michelle Hassler. Park and Recreation Commission, Shirley Caniff, Redevelopment Board, Andrew Bonnell, and Michael Kerr. Is anyone here who wants to speak on any of those issues, or are there any of those nominees or <coughs> re-nominees who are here who wish to be recognized? I'm not seeing anyone. Move approval. A motion from Mrs. Mahan. Second. Second for Mr. Carroll. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I just want to ask uh, the town manager or Mrs. Kropelka if on the Regent Theater Burma event, I see that we received something from the police department that's not on the original application. Did they get that a copy? Yes, it's all so yeah. that will be incorporated. What we have before us on our desk tonight right. um, from Officer Reto will be in co uh, coordinated with uh, 2B. Yeah. 2B. Thank you. Excuse me. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. All right. Next up. Salary survey, Mr. Town Manager. Mr. Chairman, may I um, humbly uh, ask you consider taking item number three before number two uh, for licenses and permits, uh, just due to the length of uh, number two? I think that makes a lot of sense. Item number three, request for a class two license. Uh, John Finichetti, doing business with Arlington Good evening. Good evening. Robert Onessi representing John Finichetti. Uh, we are here with respect to a used car license for the real estate at 251 uh, Summer Street in Arlington. Uh, uh, John Finichetti has lived in town all of his life. McDerm uh, Mr. McDermott Show uh, essentially owned the property going back to 1981. And when he did own the property, he went before the ZBA. He got permission to have up to six used cars for sale on the lot. He was, uh, John purchased the property approximately seven years ago. When he bought it, uh, McDermott Tro remained as a tenant at the property. He's left a couple of months ago. John would now like to sell used cars at the site. His primary purpose at the site, the business objective, is selling gasoline, both gasoline and diesel. Uh, the property itself contains approximately 18,000 square feet, ample room uh, for the gas station services as well as the used car lot uh, as well. There are two bays on the lot as well. And again, John is not going to be using the, uh, using the property for the sale of more than six cars. His uh, uh, hours of operation would be 8 o'clock a.m. to 6 p.m. He'd be operating six days a week. That's why we're here. Move approval, subject to conditions as set forth. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion or question? Mm -hmm. I just assume the six days are Monday through Saturday. <coughs> Monday through Saturday, not Sunday. Okay. Anything else? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You owe, Ms. you owe the town manager a big thank you for yes. that switch on the agenda. That was a big thank you. Mr. Chairman, I do see that Commissioner Kniff is here with us tonight. Do you think she wanted to give a speech or anything? I don't know. Huh? Well, we wanted to thank you for your service, so. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you, sir. Good. Thank you, Mr. Shirley. Adam, you're on. All right. Well, I'm very glad to be able to say tonight we're here to present the uh, final report of the salary or compensation study uh, that we've really been working on for the, the past several years. Uh, this started with a request from the Board of Selectmen um, <clears throat> some time ago to, to take a look, coming out of the GIC, uh, after the transition to the GIC, let's take a look at the compensation of all town employees and see where we rank against comparable communities. So what we started by doing was uh, bringing together uh, town management, union leadership, school management, school union leadership, uh, and uh, also a representative of the Board of Selectmen, Selectman Kiro, uh, 
uh, as well as a represent, uh, representative of the school committee, uh, Chrissy Allison Ampey. And we started working on determining who we wanted to compare ourselves to. Uh, so av as we've discussed um, at prior meetings, we used a number of criteria uh, to determine who we wanted our comparable communities to be. We looked at population, five-year average municipal growth factor, population per square mile, median income per capita, median income per household, single family median home value, average family tax bill, total tax levy, excess levy as a percentage of maximum levy, and residential valuation as a percentage of total tax levy. Um, and what that resulted in is 12 communities that we would compare ourselves to, which were Belmont, Brookline, Medford, Melrose, Milton, Natick, Needham, North Andover, Reading, Stodham, Watertown, and Winchester. So <clears throat> again, that was a really collaborative effort between the unions and the town. Uh, we all worked together to determine who those communities would be and who we would compare ourselves to, and we reached consensus on using those 12 communities. Uh, moving on from there, um, with the good work of Karen Malloy, Andrew Flanagan, we solicited the services of a consultant to help us gather all this data from the 12 communities. And that resulted in the hiring of HRS Consulting and Sandy Stepchinski, who's here tonight, along with her team from HRS Consulting to gather the data. Uh, so then a after that <coughs> hiring was made, again, a lot more work by Sandy and her team, by Karen, by Andrew, by the union leadership, uh, un uh, members of union leadership, uh, to gather this data, to analyze the data, and finalize what you have before you tonight. So th the last thing I'll say before I ask Sandy to go over the report um, is you know, we're looking forward to being able to use this data in, in practical terms. We have contracts th that are currently executed with all collective bargaining units on town and school <coughs> through the close of FY15, which is the upcoming fiscal year. But negotiations for FY16 and beyond will be starting in the next six to eight months um, during FY15. So very soon, both town management and union leadership will be able to use this data and have an informed discussion about issues of compensation that we want to address. So with that, if uh, Sandy, if you want to uh, start the presentation, I'll, I'm going to shift around so that we can uh, project. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me. Uh, it was a pleasure to do this study uh, for the town. It was a, a mammoth uh, project. And as Adam uh, mentioned, um, it was a team effort between our, our company and um, the town and, and the uh, union leadership and town officials, town management, town and school. Um, and it, as a result, uh, we have a very good product uh, that we provided. Um, on the next uh, slide, I just want to tell you a little bit about our company. Um, we are uh, a consulting firm in Massachusetts. We provide technical assistance to cities and towns in all areas of human resource management. The team consisted of three of us. Unfortunately, the other two couldn't be here this evening, but um, I wanted to mention them because they were a key part of the team, Carol Granfield and Tony Teresi, both who have 30-plus uh, years of experience uh, in management as well as financial management and local government. Okay, uh, moving on to the next slide. Um, as I mentioned, the Arlington team consisted of town and school leadership, town and school management, all the union leaders, uh, human resources, uh, town and school, and then our consultant team. I'd like to uh, give a, a huge uh, thank you to uh, Karen Malloy, who did a tremendous job in um, coordinating everything on the town side for us. Uh, without her help, uh, this never would have uh, been the, the great product that it is today. Uh, next. Um, the, uh, the general goal of the study was really, we, we were not hired to come in and update your pay plans or do that or make any specific recommendations, but basically to give you a snapshot of the municipal compensation and benefits uh, data. Um, and as Adam mentioned, uh, there were a number of communities that were selected uh, collectively uh, by town and, and union. And it was uh, intended to be an independent objective analysis. And um, we, um, we did that uh, independently. We don't know anybody here, really. We don't know the politics, so um, it was quite quite objective. Um, 
going on to the next. Um, the summary scope, it was a review of um, Town of Arlington's. Uh, we started with the job description review just so we could understand what the jobs were that we were studying. And uh, we looked at all your current compensation and benefits. We collected municipal and uh, school labor market data from other comparable cities, towns, and schools. Um, and we did a general uh, information review of what the compensation trends are for compensation and benefits in local government. And we provided the general facts uh, regarding all areas of compensation. And uh, we also provided uh, an, an enhanced uh, internal capacity to management, uh, providing tools and methodologies that can be used going forward. Um, these are the communities uh, that we use, Belmont, Brookline, Medford, Melrose, Milton, Natick, Needham, North Andover, Reading, Stoneham, Watertown, and Winchester. Um, and uh, we looked at the salary ranges, the salary averages, stipends if applicable, uh, any unique uh, requirements, shift differential, uniform pay, so forth for, for public safety positions, educational incentive pay, uh, any other pertinent information that would impact uh, the salary ranges. And we also looked at the benefits, vacation, health insurance, longevity, um, the GICHRA reimbursement. Um, and uh, it, was, it was quite uh, comprehensive, so we, look, we looked at all of those uh, pieces. Um, so when we're looking at um, your total compensation package, um, th there's uh, base pay that we look at for, for th all the uh, general government and the school uh, general positions. We looked at base pay, we looked at the pay ranges. Um, and then there's uh, indirect pay, uh, such as uh, allowances or fees that a position may get. Um, and then there's also um, other pay, such as benefits. And then there may be uh, performance uh, type merit pay. So we look at all of those um, items and we did collect all the union uh, contracts and. Um, and all that. Uh, then we study the averages, the medians, the range, the percentiles, you know, uh, we cut and diced the statistics and the data in a number of uh, different ways looking um, at it uh, at all different uh, angles um, and provided that information uh, to the town. Um, so um, there were th uh, uh, three uh, major areas of the analysis, uh, fire service, uh, was a little bit more in depth. Uh, the uh, compensation is a little bit more co complex. So we looked at base pay, uh, EMTB stipend, hazardous duty pay, associate's degree, night differential, weekend differential, holiday pay, defibrillator pay, longevity, and other pay that, um, that is typical for these types of positions. And um, we, we studied all of the uh, fire union uh, positions and we, we came up with the total uh, compensation co um, cost. I'd like to say um, that the, uh, at this point, I'd like to just say that the fire department did an excellent job in um, also helping us to collect additional uh, information and additional union contracts. And I wanna thank them you know, for that. They did a terrific job. Um, next, the uh, police service. We looked at maximum base wage, uh, school credits, longevity, night differential, weekend differential, holiday pay, firearms, defi defibrillator pay, uh, clothing allowance, cleaning allowance, and any other pay that's applicable to similar uh, bargaining unit type positions in po police. And we looked at all the union uh, police uh, positions. And then with um, teachers, uh, specifically the categories of uh, general compensation, uh, is, is um, it's, it's really categorized by education level for teacher's pay, it, whether it's a BA or an MA, uh, an MA step six, and then MA uh, maximum 15 plus, and then 30 uh, maximum. This is very typical for, for teacher's pay, and we did um, you know, study all of those uh, categories for, the, for those positions as well as, and we also looked at all other school positions as well. Uh, the study, I should say, included over 100 um, positions for town town and school. And, um, and we had two uh, key uh, meetings with the stakeholders, uh, which provided the town and the schools with uh, options and opportunity for review and input. So we actually met with everybody and gave them a copy of a draft report, and then they were able to uh, follow up and uh, give us additional information and, and provide some input. So it was a really a good give and uh, take kind of a process. We provided a draft report and then a final report. Um, and um, this, this was a unique process for the town. 
Um, there aren't too many communities that have that kind of collaboration between management and union and town officials, so I think this was sort of a unique uh, process for the town of Arlington. It was quite uh, successful to bring everybody together and work together as a team, so we were very pleased with the outcome. So um, with regard to uh, the whole study, and you have all the data, and I'm sure you're going to want to plow through all the, all the uh, information, but um, in, in addition to what the data fact-finding tells you, you know, with regard to the averages, there's also some, um, just some general recommendations uh, that we'd like to make, and, um, you know, we, we hope that the town would uh, continue in the good uh, management that they are continuing now with their compensation policy, but perhaps establish a more focused uh, compensation philosophy uh, going forward, you know, look at, you know, and, and making it a little bit more concrete as to uh, who, who you want to be compared to and how you want your administration uh, plan to look at with regard to compensation and benefits. And then determine the desired position you want to be in the market, for example, the 50th percentile. And um, the pay schedule should be maintained and updated. Um, and of course, um, you know, for any union positions that would go through the collective bargaining process. And then regular surveys should be conducted and maintained on a regular uh, basis. Uh, for, for uh, the town and um, you know every so many years you do want to benchmark uh, you know the, the market to make to see just to see how you how you fall in comparison um, so um, I'd like to thank you very much for the opportunity to have you know been of service to the town of Arlington we really enjoyed very much working with your town manager and your your assistant your deputy town manager and HR and and um, all the uh, union uh, leaders here as well um, and I just thought I would just take any questions that you might have at this time. Joe? Th thank you very much. I mean, obviously I was part of this, so I don't really have any um, specific questions on, on the report because I was at, at your presentation, but I did want to give my colleagues just a little bit of a sense be before Sandy came into the process. You should know that there were, what would you say, um, four or five meetings at least with all of the stakeholders coming together to find that basket of communities which were actually given um, to, to um, uh, HRS to, to look at. I think we probably started with what, something like at least 60 communities yes. in the greater Boston area. We looked at probably, uh, I want to say, something on the order of 20 different data points. We looked at things like um, you know, density, commercial tax base, income levels, taxation levels, um, and a whole number, a number of issues and discussed them together and kind of rank ordered them to try to find what we ultimately called the uh, Baker's Dozen, which are you know, 12 communities plus, um, plus Arlington, uh, with, a, with also a healthy um, bit of common sense thrown in as well to, to find the comparable communities. So, um, you know, Sandy and uh, Karen did an incredible amount of work taking that and pulling together all of these, these contracts, especially trying to find I know sometimes it can be difficult finding like categories. I, I, th I think one of them was like, for example, firearms pay is called something different in, in, in different communities for, for police and trying to, trying to tease that out is difficult. But there was an awful lot of work that was done probably for the six to seven months before that as well with the stakeholders to try to find this basket first before it was handed off to the consultants. I just wanted to make sure that my colleagues understood that, that context as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was going to ask, I find it hard to believe we compare to a Belmont half our size and a Medford, what, two or three times our size. So I'm not quite sure what you just said, Joe, but I'm just wondering how those particular communities were selected. I, I think you just explained that, but... So c um, can I, may I? Go ahead. So communities like that, so we, we, we started with the population range and we decided how far up down, uh, up or down to go, and then we started looking at those other criteria that Joe mentioned. So Belmont, Arlington, Medford are quite similar in terms of how dense they are. There's a little bit of a variation in density. So there's, there's a great degree of comparability about how much new tax revenue those three communities can grow. So that's one of the reasons why they're like us. You know, at Belmont, <coughs> they started to stretch a little bit away from us in terms of their property valuation higher than us, Medford a little bit lower. But when you start to look at ranges and you start to look at a number of different criteria. It, it started to go from that, you know, 60 communities to 40 communities to 30, and we and we sort of continued to narrow uh, and find that those communities, based on a number of criteria, had a lot of similarities to us. 
Is there an executive summary? I mean, you did a nice job explaining to us what you did. What did you find? I mean, I under, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I understand that this position sure. by position, yeah. but do you have sure. five conclusions on salaries um, in the town of Arlington I and think, benefits? I think um, overall that the town has done a, a, a very good job in, in um, uh, keeping up with the market. There. There were some uh, areas uh, uh, where um, th the town may have fallen behind, um, and those areas are spelled out in, in the final report. Um, and um, you know, I think uh, going forward, uh, you know, what the town needs to decide is, you know, how you want to use this data, you know, this and, and how you're going to, um, you know, make it a useful tool for you. And, and that's where the philosophy comes in, and with regard to how competitive you want to be. And I think, and I think, um, what one of the things um, I think you, you had great comparables because uh, we found a lot of good uh, comparable positions, you know, to match them. So I think that your team here that came up with the list, um, and I've been doing this for, you know, 30 years. I've, I've done these type of surveys for hundreds of communities, and um, so the methodology that they used was correct, and it was. It was good, and they came up with because you want to have a mix of communities so to make sure that for certain groups of positions that you will also have a good a good match. So because you know you're you're looking at a wide variety, a huge organization on the town side and the school side. So you want to make sure that um, you know you have good uh, matches not only for police and fire but also you know for for your other uh, departments as well for your general government as well. Did you by any chance look at, uh, oh, the salary of selectmen in uh, communities? Uh, no, I wish I did, but no. I, didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I failed you in representing I, Mr. I, I bet you're all underpaid. <laughs> so. Good answer. Thank you. Um, first, I want to thank you, Ms. Sipsinski. I'm going to say that incorrectly. I apologize. Um, okay. First, I'll just preface where my remarks are coming from, and then I just have a few questions on some of the um, I'm not going to go into depth on it because I think anything more in depth, perhaps I should meet with the town manager or, some, or Ms. Malloy, because um, I don't want to, you know how sometimes I get a little picky. Or, um, where I'm coming from, and this is great data to have, is that I'm trying to reconcile that when we were talking about entering the GIC and when we were talking about the override in the five-year plan, um, we had, I think these were, if they weren't all, I think there's 12 communities, I think the 10 communities are encapsulated amongst these 12. And all the PowerPoint presentations when we were talking about GIC, and when we were talking about the override showed, you know, that we were at the bottom end, second or third to the last. And I don't really see that in here, um, but again, I'll, I'll avail myself of the opportunity um, for that. The, the other thing that I'm, I'm trying to reconcile is that while there are 12 community cities and towns that are cited in here, um, it's really hard pressed to find one position as compared to all 12. I mean, I don't mean to, I'm not picking on any particular department, but like legal of the 12 communities, I think there were only three that we actually compared to. Um, on um, public works, we had a, a good foray across the board, but I can't remember if it was for, uh, foreman supervisor or highway supervisor, I know electrician and plumber were back down to four to six. Um, I'm just wondering why, I know when we went through the GIC and we said to our employees, if you want to get raises, you've got to get real, you've got to take the GIC. We did have that data. I'm wondering why that's not here. You want, oh, I don't know who I direct that to. I, I, look, I also, I'm, in terms of comparable compensation data before the GIC? Well, well what I'm saying is, okay, let me pick, I don't want to pick legal, that's not fair, I'd be picking out. <laughs> um, Working foreman, uh, 19C on the first page. We have Arlington and we're only compared to Medford. And what I'm saying is when we were having GIC conversation and the override five year structural plan, um, we were compared to 10 <coughs> communities. I'm just wondering why, I'm, and I'm just picking that one out, I'm not. It's because Arlington and Medford would have been the only communities who had listed a working foreman, Mason. Well, s how about legal? <coughs> Legals that would be an example of uh, Arlington is one of probably on the lower end of communities that have decided to have an in-house town council as opposed to 
uh, out of house or contract with town council services. So, um, could, could I, uh, mm -hmm. I just follow up on that too? Um, the way that our methodology works too is we do, you know, that's why we start off by reviewing the job descriptions <coughs> and what the jobs are here and get a good foundation of understanding your organization. And we do want to compare apples to apples. And um, so if there is a blank or there's no data from a particular community, a lot of times, you know, we go by the, um, you know, 75% rule. If it's not a match 75% that we might, we might not use it. Um, so we, um, we do a lot of digging and uh, research to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples. So sometimes it's better to have a few really good matches than, than a whole bunch who, who that might, might not be. Um, and you're, ne you're never gonna have 12 matches for every single position. Um, it's, it's, I've, I've been doing this for years, I've never seen it. I mean, it's just because not every um, community is gonna have an exact organization a, as yours. So it's really like a benchmark and a, and a, uh, and a snapshot you know, of the market. And, um, and I think, you know, the, and then the town for probably has their own internal, I know they maintain their own classification and internal equity uh, system as well. So going forward, you know, they also have that tool that they use internally and they've been doing that uh, very successfully. Okay, and what I'll do is I'm gonna avail myself of the opportunity to have a further in-depth discussion with the town manager. I just wanna reconcile that when we were going through GIC discussions of entering it as well as the override, um, we did have all those salaries and it did show on the lower end, but I don't want to also jeopardize your bargaining position and I do appreciate the fact that, as was cited before, um, Ms. Sipistansky, I'm gonna say it, Ms. S. Just, um, just uh, call me Sandy. Sandy, Sandy. that you know, we do have a very unique uh, model here where we do have the town manager and the unions um, and I do applaud that. Um, it, it's, it's just, I wanna make sure that this study, uh, where I'm coming from is when we spoke to our town employees and uh, our retired, well not so much our retirees, but w about going into GIC and, and going for the override, we acknowledged that they were on the lower end pay scale and we needed as a town to look at an override employees GIC. The other question I might have for you, Sandy, or maybe the town manager, just for my edification, um, and I'm sure my colleague, Mr. Carroll, knows the answer to this, but having not been, um, in on the discussions because he was our liaison and did a great job at that. Could you just very briefly explain to me, and I'm just picking out an area, um, the data points. The data points for, I'm gonna say number four, public works director, we have 10 and 11, so I'm assuming there were 10 data points for the lower end compensation for public works in Arlington, and there were 11 data points for the high end. And yeah. I'm just wondering if I go down to 19C, working form in Mason, there's one and one. So I'm just wondering what are the data points, why sometimes there's 12, 14, sometimes sure, there's one. Sure, that's point. a very good question. The data points are the number of matches or hits that we get for data. Um, so what it means is um, when you're looking at the average, it uh, means we had 10, uh, you know, for it, so say for example, um, for uh, you know, a public works director, for example, we had 10 matches for the min minimum range that are, are that are built into the average and 11 for the maximum. So um, obviously the more data points you have, the more valid, you know, the validity of the statistic. Um, and it what it does is it just counts as to how, ma how many pieces of data that we have. So, um, you know, when you're looking at the average and the min max and the median, you're saying, okay, we know it represents this much. Um, so, um, uh, Okay, so I, I was looking at that. I think what I'm hearing you're saying is, I was looking at it, did we look at 10 and 11 different facets of a particular job for one position and we only looked at one, but what you're saying is that's not necessarily a probing data point, it's a statistical analysis data It's point. a statistical analysis, absolutely. So that's just an easy way to go down that column to see of the 12 communities that were cited, how many were actually matched? To. Right, how many do we match? Right. Yeah, and that, that number should actually match the number of boxes that are filled in to the left. Mm -hmm. If you lo look at the left under the... Um, no, that definitely, if, as I'm looking at that... That should that, match. I just took data point, it can mean so many different things. And then the only other thing I'd leave with the chairman is I don't know if at the end of this, if there's any um, 
statement by the union or not, or if everybody wants to wait and take a next step. Thank I, you. I was absolutely planning on oh. uh, inviting a uh, union conversation. And, and frankly, I, I debated at the beginning of this whether or not I want, no, I didn't say, I was debating what to myself whether or not we should do um, questions and comments and then uh, invite them. And I scanned the audience and I didn't see anyone who was ready and waiting. So, I would, uh, so, uh, so I'm gonna keep going and then I'm yeah, gonna, uh, uh, um, but yes, I absolutely was thinking about that. Uh, Steve. Thank you. Um, you know, I'd like to follow my colleagues in thanking everyone who was involved in this. This is a, you know, I, I was very impressed by this study. Um, as many of you know, my, for three generations now, my family has worked for the town, and um, it's very important that our town employees are compensated fairly for their great work. Um, I also like to see the town and school working together on financial issues. Um, I hope that's something that continues, and uh, can maybe we can delve deeper into uh, moving forward. Um, I do have one thing that stuck out to me was um, performance-based awards for town employees. And I was wondering if you could speak a little further to that. I know that we saw um, what the the fire department has for um, you know their continued study and their um, further accreditations, as well as the um, police department. But I, I was thinking more along the lines of you know kind of the general government positions, what those type of awards would look like. I don't know if that's right for Sandy or Adam. So uh, in these existing contracts, uh, for the first time that I'm aware of, with SEIU, which are the middle management positions that are in a union, we did negotiate with them uh, a, a new performance incentive, uh, which is in place now, where they can either um, delineate a goal with their department head uh, at the beginning of a year and then demonstrate the meeting of that goal at the end of the year, and if they do that, they earn a financial incentive. Uh, or um, pick basically an accreditation or a certification they want to receive uh, that will help them in the performance of their job. And if they achieve that and follow through, earn uh, a s the same performance incentive. And they're eligible for that once a year to go through that process. Um, <coughs> so we were successful doing that with one group. Uh, I'd very much like to spread it to more groups. Uh, so as we go into bargaining for the next round, um, we'll look back and see how successful we've been uh, and how many people have really been taking it up on a regular basis mm -hmm. and see whether or not uh, it seems appropriate to try to negotiate that with other bargaining units. Thank you, and I, I, I do, I like the idea of it as well. And um, I guess this is appropriate for Adam too. Do you see um, this study having any impact on staffing levels in town? Um, you know, I in the review I've done so far, it has not struck me uh, as such that, and I would guess you're saying, you know, are, are we so out of whack somewhere that we need to fix compensation but thereby reduce staffing levels? And nothing I've seen would, would speak to me in that regard, um, or, or I would at least say it wouldn't be my intention to approach any negotiations from that point of view. Okay, thank you. Um, so do we have someone uh, from the union leadership who wants to weigh in? <laughs> yes? You're, you're absolutely welcome to. It would be. <laughs> thank you. First, I'm uh, Bob Lodges, and most of you people know me. Mr. Dunn, I don't think you know me. I don't think so, I'm sorry. Precinct 7. Good so. to meet you. <laughs> um, I became the union president about a year and a half ago. I'm a 30-year veteran of the fire department. And uh, it's an old colleague here, John. We've had a few arguments over our years. <laughs> but I just want to uh, let the selectmen know that um, we have a good working relationship with Adam and Karen. And I look forward to this. You know, they were open-minded to us. Um, I put two of my smartest guys on this. I have Paul McPhail and this guy, Marty Conroy. Very intelligent guys, and um, they really dug deep into this, and they did their own little background, and they found a few mistakes that benefited the fire department. But we also found mistakes that benefited the town. And there was a discussion in, in the executive session is that how do we handle this? And we said that we're going to be honest with the town, show them their mistakes that benefit us, and hopefully it goes a long way to say that we want to work together. And I seem, it seems to be working very well. I, I have good faith in Adam and Karen that when we come to negotiations in about six months, that we'll use this data and um, we'll negotiate fairly and uh, I see us not having any problems. <laughs> right, Adam? <laughs> okay, I'm, glad to, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> um, but like I said, I, I thank you very much for taking care, you know, looking at this and, you know, I really haven't seen the study that much. I've seen a little bit of it. I've seen the preliminaries, but I haven't seen the final report. Um, but I just want to thank you for doing a great job and thinking, uh, taking care of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Anybody else want to, in the audience, want to speak on it? Um, so, I, um, I, my comments are that I'm really glad that we got here. Um, I know that I, w like, I know we've been chomping at the bit to have this one done for a bit, and it, it, I think it took longer than a lot of us hoped it would. But at the same time, uh, it was more important to get it done right than to get it done. And I'm really glad to hear that the process uh, went as smoothly as it did, and it has. I think the biggest thing about this was that it has support of everybody at the table that we can set a, find a bunch of data that we all agree on and sets a common conversation to hopefully go forward and I'm really, really very glad about that. Um, I did have a couple comments about the specific data that came out of it and I shared those with the manager earlier um, but I, I'm, I'm really d delighted. Uh, Joe. I just want to add one more a footnote. You know, as we know that on the um, uh, under the municipal departments, you know, the town manager is delegated with the authority to, to, to undertake negotiations on behalf of the town. But I can tell you from my previous position on the, the school department, um, you know, the former school committee member, we actually would sit as part of the uh, bargaining team um, for the town. And I can tell you that, that just as Bob said, you know, coming to and, and, and agreeing on the set of data and comparables that, that, that you're going to use as the basis for conversation is an awful lot of the beginning of any, of any negotiation. And having this done before negotiations even commenced is just a huge win for all of us. Sam? Just one quick, quick <coughs> question. Um, I don't know if Sandy or Adam would answer this. Just taking from your presentation, I'm not asking the slide to be drawn back up, but it's my memory, the fifth or sixth slide, Sandy, when you were making the overall presentation, um, and I was trying to listen and read and write down sure. at the same time. You mentioned that there were four boxes on the screen, and you, one of the boxes you were talking about that HR, S? HRS, yeah. HRS. Um, I wrote down as quick as I could um, one of those boxes on that fifth or sixth slide you said would uh, provide the town with tools to, tools to enhance and update management and salary. What I'm wondering is what is the tool? Is it a software um, program that we got from this? Is it the actual data that's here? Is it something else? It's it's the actual data and the, the, the macros to in the methodology of how we pulled it together and how it's presented and you know how it all adds up so it's it's sort of a package um, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a software program but I'd call it more um, computerized tools that the town could use to update is that something that yeah well, I mean now that we have um, you know the documents that before you are in spreadsheets so now that we have those spreadsheets as appropriate through negotiations, working with unions, we're much more readily able to make updates as we can get mm -hmm. the data. That's not to say that you know every year we can reproduce right. this, uh, but if we gain some information about what kind of cost of living increase was given in some towns, we can update. Or you know, if we want to focus on one position, we have that tool now where it's yeah. much easier to update than starting from scratch. So when you say tool, it's what we have before us, and if you do want to go in, your case in point. It's something that you, the town manager, or, the peop or Mrs. Malloy can do. We won't ha have to keep bringing poor Sandy Correct. back. Correct. And I'm not saying we don't want you back. I'm sure. just. No, that's okay. okay. I, when I, you I, said it was a new tool, I wanted yeah, to. Think of it, it as a footprint that you can, okay. you know, work work off of. Thank you. Sure. You're welcome. Thank you. Kevin, may I ask one more question? Is the uh, police and fire chief in here somewhere? And I just haven't come across it. It is okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. They're on page thank two. You. Yep. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Do I have a motion for receipt? Move to receive. Oh uh, no, Mr. Kiro should do that. I move receipt. Kiro. I don't want to second that. No. Do <laughs> you have a second? second. Mr. Yeah, Greeley. Second. No, he did after all. After all, Mr. Greeley. After Greeley's jumping right. in. <laughs> Adam, did you have any final comments? I neglected to say earlier, we will be working to get all of this information posted on the town's website later this week. Great. Any further comments? Anybody else in the audience who wanted to make a comment? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, 5-0. Thank you. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, Sandy. Sandy. Sorry for your last name then. Sorry, I never did. Yeah. Oh, they were my neighbors. <laughs> Smith. <laughs> So while you're packing up, uh, Sandy, you've been in front of a lot of boards and committees. Yes. Is this the best one you've been in front of, would you say? <laughs> sure.
Just procedural on that, would her report be similar to like a power three cell of an audit that we really shouldn't Xerox it, or is it something that's so not I think it's pu public that. information. It's okay, yeah. thank you. That's right, you put it on the record. Maria, we, uh, are we is the temperature set at steam bath or uh, yeah. I'm, a little I'm, below I'm getting that? Like <laughs> 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 I'm totally you don't have to have a glass of wine. Just come to this meeting. You know, no need to save the calories and everything. I, uh, I seriously considered whether or not this was going to be a meeting without jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't pull it off. <laughs> now that that's over, you might be able to. I wore short <laughs> sleeves. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Gonna ice up though. Might it still be coming in though? Might it still be coming in tonight? Oh no, I don't know. I'm, no, I know, freezing up. Uh, free, getting cold. Yeah. Oh. Seventy-five. Thank you. Florida lights. Uh, or my husband likes to keep it on sixty. You know. Me too. Go crazy. I like it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, All right. Next up on our agenda is the Citizens Open Forum. Uh, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the Open Forum was established. It should be noted there's a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Mr. Marr. Welcome. Uh, some of you may remember me. I, I worked <laughs> for the town for a little while. I uh, think when you did that, we didn't have this three-minute <laughs> limit, though. Actu <laughs> actually, the, I was chatting with Adam uh, before, and the board used to meet every week, and Kevin and Diane might remember that. And I calculated just roughly how many selectmen's meetings I've been to. There's well over, literally well over 1,000 if I was here for 34 years. What a hole it's left in my life. <laughs> 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 What do you do Des at Desolation. On Monday nights, I just sit at home, stare out the window. <laughs> uh, but it's good to see everybody, seriously. Uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity to come here tonight. And I want to uh, acknowledge Doug. I've been met, met with Doug, and we've been chatting about various things. I think the town can be very, very well served by his appointment. And, of course, Marie, dear and, near and dear to me. Um, I'm here tonight on behalf of the Kentwood Association, where I'm the council and a longtime resident. I have with me Ann Doherty, who's the president of the board of directors, and Gary Tibbetts, who is our um, does some administrative work, and his, his firm handles the uh, maintenance of the property. Uh, we're here to to re make a respectful point. And by the way, uh, I've met with Adam and Mike Rademacher on this. We had a very cordial, respectful meeting. Um, and just by way of background, essentially our point is that when, you, when the town comes to read the water meter, there's one water meter in the garage, but we're charged 64 fees. Um, back, by means of background, in 1994, your board voted to charge condo unit, uh, unit owners the residential, essentially the residential rate, which was very well received, we appreciate that. As a matter of fact, uh, Kentwood led that effort back in 1994, and the board then voted, it's, these are individual units, just like individual homes, and they ought to be charged the residential, the lowest residential rate, which was fair. We appreciate that, it's, it's meant a great deal of savings, not only for the Kentwood Association uh, unit members, but all the other condominiums in town. However, what you, the board did not do, it did not change or at an institute, it's not clear to me whether or not it didn't change the policy or you instituted a new policy where notwithstanding that there is one meter, there is an administrative fee times 64 for the condominium, for the Kentwood. Now, we don't think that's particularly fair and I will defer to the town council, but I think it's also illegal uh, under the city of Boston versus Emerson College case, which indicates it had a very uh, uh, definitive ruling by the Supreme Judicial Court that you can't charge a fee except as it offsets the, the uh, expense in 
providing that service. So if there is but one meter to read, with all due respect, we don't think it's appropriate or fair that you multiply that number by 64. Now, it's true that there's a larger meter that has to be read, and eventually that meter will have to be replaced. So perhaps a little bit high, one, one fee might be higher for then, say, a single family home. Uh, so we did have a meeting, uh, as I said, and the, I think Adam could speak for himself, but I think he feels constrained by the board's policy and enacted in 1994. So we would ask you to consider um, altering the fee to be not times 64, perhaps a larger fee than applies to a single family residence because it is a smaller, is a larger meter to read uh, and it ha when it's replaced it's going to be more expensive, but <coughs> certainly not times 64. So it's good to see everybody, I appreciate it and uh, thank you for your consideration. Thank you. We're not done with you yet. <laughs> Kevin? Uh, yeah, thank you. So does this apply to all condominiums? Yes. Son? It would be a sig fairly Same significant revenue exists. loss for the town. I mean, there's no, there's no question it would be a revenue loss for the town. So I, well, is that, may I? Yes, please. Adam. So th there's sort of a, there's a, a larger policy issue that the board um, would have to consider if it wanted to take a look at changing this. Uh, Crosstown, uh, if there's one larger meter serving uh, what would be a business, an apartment complex or a condo complex, uh, if, they, if the system that John is describing was not in place, they would be charged at the tiers, so based on usage. And admittedly, admittedly it would be very difficult for them to do any kind of conservation that would get them down into the lower tiers. Uh, so in I either the old system or the new system, the new tiers that the board voted that just went into effect on January 1st, the Kentwood would be paying a higher bill without the existence of the system that Attorney Marr just described. Um, because it's, a, it's actually uh, more uh, cost effective for them to have their bill divided by 64 and have the administrative fee put on as opposed to paying at the higher usage tiers. So that would really be the policy question the board would have to consider if it wanted to create really a, a special case for condos where they would not pay administrative fees like single-family homeowners pay or pay higher usage fees like potentially single-family homeowners pay if they use more. It would kind of create a, a sort of a, a little bit of a, a soft zone for them to use as much water as they want uh, without, without getting the penalty of a higher rate. So that's my t take tonight. Happy to provide more analysis for the board to think about before we talk about water rates again this year. Mayor? Sort of along that um, vein. Um, Within the past year when we were going through the discussions with Mike Watermacher and others, and this came up, you said about the three-tiered, and, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure the way it was put before us, I'm just trying to understand it, I'm, I'm not debating it at all, um, that replacement water meters had to do with size of pipe and something like CCF or CFF. Yeah, correct. That's what you're referencing there. And w what I think I'm hearing from now is the second part of the time 64 or, or not divided by 64, was that contained in that presentation or it wasn't contained in there but as a result of our vote, <coughs> that was an offshoot? No, so um, Attorney Marr is not referencing something that changed with the board's recent vote. This has been an existing condition for the past 20, 20, 20 years, so, yeah, so tw yeah, about 20 years this has been in effect. The Kentwood Association recently started these discussions with myself and, and with the board but nothing the board did last year created the okay. situation. All right, um, I was wondering what happened. Okay, and then you said City of Boston versus Andover? Emerson, uh, Emerson. Emerson College. Okay, so Very and famous then place. <laughs> the other thing is I'll leave it to the town manager and the proponents in terms of um, what the next step is. I think I'm hearing that the manager will um, encapsulate um, the discussions and the points, and then I don't know if, it's, if this is a Warren article, if this is a vote of the board. I'll wait till we get to that step uh, in the future. I think with, I think it's the board, uh, you're the water commissioner. I don't think the town meeting, uh, my humble opinion, has a say on it. Yeah. That's fine. John, I just want to clarify something that I didn't, uh, and I, between the two of you, I wasn't quite sure. So uh, you're currently charged, so with the tiering system, the, if you use a little bit of water, you get charged a rate. You get charged, if you use more water, you get charged a higher rate. 
If you use more water, you get charged at a higher rate. That's the, the new tier, that's we've, or not yes. new. It's been a three tier system. We changed the numbers and what triggers those tiers. And so uh, your, your association is getting charged 64 fees. And is it also getting, like what rate end, uh, is it ending up being charged at? Like the high level, the, the middle, or the low one? Yeah. The lower level. The lower one. Okay. So one could argue then that the fee is really, like so perhaps what the thing to do is to, cr I mean, so, I mean, I'm not, this is not practical or necessarily wise, but just for the sake of argument, we could generate 64 different bills and then that would justify the fee and they would be at, at the low rate. You, you could do that. Yeah. Uh, you could do that. But, <laughs> one meter but, it, but still, bills. it's still just one meter to read. Yeah. And, but and that's the key. Someone goes out there and yeah. reads the meter. And the, the fee is to defray the expense of reading the meter. And the bills. And, and the bills. Okay. But okay. if you said, I'm, I'm not sure that would make a lot of sense to say that. I mean, no, technically, I, I guess you're be. right. Okay. Because I'm just trying to think about what the right way to do, because if you are getting, because obviously we, re, we rely on that fee for part of our revenue, I mean, or part of the, I mean, the revenue that to offset it, uh, uh, all the costs. And so if we were to, to undertake this and like take that significant hit, we'd have to figure out some way to recoup it. And one way to look at it would be to say, um, the condominium is getting a benefit for, the, it's both getting the benefit of getting their usage split in 64, but and it is also getting the benefit of not paying the same usage fee, and that would be a tricky situation for us. Well, yes, uh, but if, you know, if it's probably not directly on point, but the majority of people who live in the, in the Kentwood are single people, mm -hmm. um, and uh, something about two-thirds of them are single family, single individual there, and presumably the water usage is considerably less mm -hmm. than, I mean, it, it does point out that we've just I installed uh, new toilet fixtures, we're, we're making an effort to conserve water. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not directly on point, but, you know, we, are, we do try hard to, okay. uh, to be uh, responsible water users at, at the Kentwood. Does someone want to make a motion to refer the Kevin? Well, I, I wanted to seek our former town council's counsel and let the new town council decide whether it's any good or not. What would be the ideal motion you'd like this board to make right now? Move to refer to. I, I would, I would, uh, the, the, the motion I would, uh, I guess, we would like to suggest, and I, I, I guess I'm feeling the loyalty to the town on the one side and loyalty to the condo so on the other, and I, I, I'm certain you're not going to do anything without further input from the town manager. I certainly would not want to. I'm uh, not so suggesting that you want to do I'm that. But the motion would be to make condo fees, water meter reading fees uh, in Arlington commensurate with the expense of reading that meter. And not to multiply it by the individual unit owners. So, mm. And I think I would, I would probably rule that motion as out of order if yeah, not no, properly done. I'm, I'm open to refer, but okay. I, I wanted to give him a moment. You know what yeah, I mean? Thank you. I love yeah. this guy. You put him on the spot. He's firm. <laughs> yeah. uh, Doug gave me the look, Kevin. He can't do that. So, <laughs> But Mr. Tibbetts did want to speak. Gary, do you wanna, did you want to say something? Oh, I just, I just, uh, could you yeah, come on up to the mic, please, sir? Gary. Thank you. Gary Tibbetts from Northern Property Minutes. Can't wait. The, um, they don't get 64 bills. I know. They just get one. Well, we could. <laughs> right, but it's, it's almost $30 it per unit dumb. per bill. I mean, that's a lot for stamp and reading. It would be dumb, dumb. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's twice a year right now. We want to make sure it's not going to be four times a year. So uh, I move to refer to the manager. Uh, anything else I need to say there? Or second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or comment? Um, just Same. whenever we get information in the future, I know I'd be interested in um, the actual vote and law citation that the Board of Selectmen in 1994 took. If um, the town council and um, town manager think it's appropriate, um, I'd like at least a citation of the city of Boston versus Emerson. Um, so I, I can, that, that's, that's a case that basically tells all municipalities you can't charge more for something than it costs to produce it. I, I'd just like That's to see, see, or you can just refer me where it is in, in the legal docket or in the green yeah, books of the wall, and I'll find it myself. And then the other thing is, um, I, I think what I'm hearing is how do we balance, one of the things I think the town manager and the proponents and Mr. Rademacher are looking at 
um, how do we balance the lower rate water usage charge with the 64 feet charge and what the happy medium is? And yeah, I mean, so if it's the board's prerogative, what we'll do when we come back with a water rate recommendation for FY15 at some point later this spring, we can provide a series of options. I was going to say, if you want to provide recommendations, scenario. and then we can have the further discussion. Thank you. So we have a motion and we have a second. Is there any further discussion? Well, uh, if just clarification. Yep. So, if you, so there will be no resolution to this until spring? Sh should the board want something sooner, we can consider that. Two weeks? I, two weeks? I'm content to look at it in the context of our regular water discussion. My, so as am I. Well then. <laughs> oh. One, two, three. <laughs> I'm done. The, the honest answer is part, you know, part of depending on what decision the board made, the overall rates for the entire town might need to be higher based on the decision that's made for a condo association. Which that might. Could be, yeah. But we have to take time to do that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those want to, Anne, are you happy? Are you all right? Uh, well. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I'm sorry, ma'am. Could come on up to the mic? Sorry. I apologize. Sorry, friends. She, um, I spoke with her about this today. I think I've taken the right path in sending letters to the town manager and the Department of Public Works, and we walked through, and I finally was able to recalculate the bill based on the numbers on the bill. And I was surprised to see that the $21 rate that's charged to me when I owned a house is going to be multiplied by 64 here. And uh, of course, I complained, and I was told that that uh, there was this law case that that said that was illegal. I think that uh, the reason that Tier 1 was granted to us through Dr. Simpson, the previous and earlier president, was because some of these condos got together and they came up with the, the average rate, which was a low rate. It doesn't compare to some big industry or whatever. So I think we're talking in the first place uh, tier one as being very fair. And because I think the people that are deciding decided that tier one was, a, was giving in to us or, or granting us a favor that the idea of multiplying the admin fee times 64 was the, uh, an okay to, way to go to settle some water bills. Now the thing is that our meter size is two, two inch. So the fee now is $52. And if you do four bills and multiply 52 times 64, you know, what was costing us $2,600 a year, where instead of like $40 a year, is really going to magnify. And our condo fees have gone up. The water bill, each water bill represents one month's maintenance fee. And as I said, there's 50 units out of 64 that only have a single owner. So I, I hope you'll think those things through in your future work. Thank you for the time. Can I ask a question? I, know, I'm, I just want to make sure I followed something there. So when did the, tell me about the change in the, in the, in the administrative fee? That, was there a change in the administrative fee recently? The administrative fee, I believe, was initiated in 1994. But it didn't change recently. So It's changing this year coming up towards the July July bill. So the board, the board's vote. From, it's changing to equal the, depending on the size of the meter. Okay. The, bo the board's vote was to increase all meter fees based on the size of the meter, uh, but it's going to be divided by four and not two. So it was twenty-one dollars. The increase will be twenty-six dollars. Not not fifty-two four times a year, but fifty. It'll be fifty-two divided by four instead of fifty-two divided by two, as it would have been oh. in the past. It's going to be fifty-two what? Divide, uh, when we go to quarterly billing on, on July 1st, 
it yeah. will be 52 divided by 4, not divided by divided 2 by four. as it is now. Yeah. Or 52 times 64 divided by 4. It, that's yes, correct. We're hoping against okay. that. Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. We got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for answering. But so, <coughs> any further comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? 5 0. Very welcome. Thanks, Is there anyone else here who wishes to speak under the Citizens Open Forum? Representative Garbley, you must have something for us. And I figured I'd call your name out since I saw that you arrived. <laughs> uh, anybody else Citizens Open Forum? Closed. Next up, discussion, uh, 1207 Mass Ave. Mr. Chapley. So I wanted to start a discussion with the board tonight, and I provided a memo uh, in regard to that discussion. In regards to, uh, a lot of regards, uh, 1207 Massachusetts Ave, uh, currently inhabited by the Disabled American Veterans Association of the DAV. Uh, as the board knows, uh, that is a town-owned property owned by the Board of Selectmen, uh, and there's currently no valid lease for the current tenants. So I wanted to initiate a discussion where the board could uh, start a process where we take feedback from the board, take public feedback, and think about drafting an RFP uh, or some other process whereby we decide, uh, or the board decides, excuse me, what the next use or what, what the appropriate use of that uh, facility is. Um, could be for a town use, for town business, could be uh, for lease, uh, the, the board could issue an RFP to lease the property, uh, or the board could consider working with town meeting in the future to d completely sell and dispose of the property. Those are options the board could consider. Um, what I would ask the board to do, uh, consider doing tonight is forming uh, uh, an ad hoc subcommittee of the Board of Selectmen uh, to meet with, uh, at, at the very least, myself and town council and any other um, people from the town, either within government or outside of government, that you think should be part of that subcommittee to take feedback, have a public meeting, get public feedback, and then come back with a larger recommendation to the board at a future meeting. Joe. Uh, thank you. Th thank you for bringing this forward. I, I know that, that this has been um, kind of on our docket for, for, for a while. Um, are, are you making a recommendation as to the form that, that would be most useful to you um, uh, uh, as far as a working group might be concerned? Are you kind of putting that in our court? Well, I mean, since the, and I had a discussion. And I recognize that ultimately the decision is with us. Any recommendations are with us, but we're going to rely on you quite a bit, I think, on this. Yeah, I, I, so I, I want the board to be a, an active part of this, um, and so that, that's why I'm asking for sort of a board subcommittee with board representation I think would be uh, okay. an, an appropriate move. And since it would be the board making a recommendation to the board, it is um, acceptable for the board to have such a subcommittee. Okay, okay. Um, I, I would hope that if, if we, I mean, I think we do have to take this on, um, and you know, a working group does, does seem to be the most logical way to go. I know I, for one, whether I serve on that working group or not, I, I, I hope that we can arrange a tour of the property for the members of the board, though, because I, I've never been inside the building, to, to be honest, and, and uh, be useful to, uh, to, to see. And, and I hope that if we form this working group that, that in its charge and in its scope that we, um, we actually look at facility needs we have for the town down the road. I mean, I'm thinking front of mind for me right now is that we have potential need for swing space for some of the town offices at the high school if we take on that project. For example, it's, but there's a potential that, that, that we may need to shuffle shuffle things a little bit and, and um, that, that there would be potential needs. So I hope that that would be in the charge. So I'm happy to make a motion. I, I, don't, I, haven't, I don't know what form we would want this to, uh, to take, though. If you have something you're excited about, I'd say make it, and if not, let's kick it around a little bit. Okay, let's kick it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, I, I generally invite other members to speak before I, but I actually have some, uh, some I'm, gonna, I'm gonna jump in <coughs> a, a, a ahead of my usual space and lines. Um, I, my thinking on this one has really evolved a lot over, sin, over the time since we, we found out about this, and every time I thought about it again, I came up with like a new reason, or a new thing to think about, but I, I'm feeling reasonably good about where I am right now, which is, uh, in some ways, this is like the town like did the wash and it came out and it like found a twenty dollar bill in its pocket. Like this is an asset that the town owned that we frankly just did not remember that we owned. It was not in our in the front of our brain. And so you say, okay, great, we've got this. Now, what is it that we should do with it? 
And I think some of our first inc instincts were, okay, well, we've got this need for office space. We've got this need for this kind of function. Let's move it over into that. And I thought, I heard some of the proposals that were being kicked around informally. And I thought, no, that just doesn't feel right. Because what we've got is this essentially fairly prime real estate on Massachusetts Avenue that could be part of our economic engine. And it's part of when we talk about the compromises that we make in terms of density and where we put parking and noise and stuff like that. That's one of those places where if you're going to make a noisy, busy establishment, Mass Ave is really one of those places that you should be doing it. But on the other hand, there, is, uh, there are things that the town does that would benefit from visibility. So for instance, uh, veteran services uh, comes to mind. Um, the retirement services, which right now, you know, all the retirees who need to talk to the retirement board go into the basement of the high school, which is awkward to put it mildly for, our, for everyone involved. That's the type of thing that theoretically could be there. Then there's other services that the town provides that simply are better when they're better publicized. So some of the health and human services work that we do. So there is an argument to be made for me that we use, you know, this, not just the piece of property, but like, you know, we have a very limited resource, which is space on Mass Ave. Um, but then there's this other part that says, you know, a lot of those things can be done on a back street or a side street uh, where they don't need Mass Ave location. And maybe we're best served by turning that into um, capital funds that we can then use towards capital costs in the future. And uh, I don't know where it is, but that's like my thinking of the continuum that I think we should be thinking of. And so that's why I think a working group to look at it more appropriately and get more heads and more eyes on it is uh, the, I, 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 su I support what the manager is recommending. Yeah. Kevin? So I move that we develop this working group that you serve on along with your choice of one other member that scored. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, mean, I think all of us would like this one. I, yeah. I think it's an exciting um, opportunity. But before I do that and finish, who else you think, Adam, I know it's you, and who else do you think we should have in this working group? And just at a minimum, myself and town council. So that's four. Should there be five? I was going to ask if we thought, if I may, yes, if please. it's appropriate to have the veteran service agent be a member of the committee. And if the, po the point I was going to make, if, if, if when Mr. Greeley's done, I don't want to jump on your turn. Is it, why are you still there? Um, I just want to, um, I haven't asked um, members of the DAV officially, but yeah. you know that's where we gather um, <coughs> and the Excuse like, me. and I've been in there, and I've heard from individuals that um, one of the benefits of the three veterans club, DAV, <coughs> VFW, American Legion, that the DAV is truly the only handicap accessible um, mm. club that they have right now. So that's why I'm thinking whether it's a use of providing veterans retiree services, whether it's uh, split use um, pantry, but maybe if we had the veterans service agent officer as a member of this committee, doesn't necessarily have to have a vote. Um, I think could also have that conversation with all the veterans clubs in town. And, um, and I think what I'm hearing from Mr. Greeley is set up this working group that ultimately will hold a public hearing. At least one. Yes, definitely. A, a public yeah. hearing and or a public hearing and a public hearing that brings stakeholders in and then come back to the board. So I would just offer if we could have the veteran service agent. Kevin, do you mind if I go to Sue first? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, one, I wasn't done, but. <laughs> I know, I, I'm, I'm No, no, that. that's all right. I've Sorry. already if you, Do you want to finish, Kevin? No, no, no. no. I love um, to hear from you. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, I do have a couple thoughts as well. I, I actually, after looking at this, I came in thinking uh, to definitely keep it in town hands. Um, but after, um, you know, um, what Dan said, I, I, I'm open to considering otherwise. Um, I also came in thinking that we shouldn't form a working group. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we just, could do it up here. No, like, I mean, we could. We, uh, uh, um, but, uh, but now, you know, I, I, after the conversation, I think a working group is the right avenue as long as it doesn't drag on. Um, I, I was, and why I, I didn't want to form a working group is because I know how sometimes working groups can be formed and then work on something for, you know, a year. And I think this has to be you know, rather expedited. I don't want to see this drag along for too long. And, you know, I think it, it might not be an easy decision, but it's one that we have to make. And I think yeah. that we can make it sooner than later um, after the correct input's being had. Um, and the only other thing I, I will say about it is if the veterans agent is going to be on, isn't he retiring? Uh, I saw his retirement party um, notice. So we have, to, is there going to be a new one hired that could 
partake in this? Or? So, so, Selectwoman Mahan did take a piece of my new business. I'm just uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so, uh, yes, we, we have made uh, a new hire of a new veteran service officer. Okay. His name is Jeffrey Chunglo. And um, I'm working with Christine Bongiorno to have him before the board at either the February 10th or 24th meeting, depending on his availability. Okay, thank you. And, um, uh, and yeah, and not that I, I, I think that as long as the new veteran service agent comes in, knowing that you know the 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 current space is no longer for you know the the VAB's use, um, I feel like he's appropriate to be there. Thank you. Yeah, may I? I do think I do think it would be appropriate to have. Uh, him as part of that team, e even if it's just from the perspective of working for a potential transition of the DAV out of the building, I think it would be a valuable resource to have him involved. So I was going to disagree because he's new and he's yeah. from out of town. I didn't think it's a good idea. Yeah. I, I, I think the, pr the principle is a good idea, but it's, I'd like I think someone whatever transition more there familiar is, with yeah. Arlington. Uh, but that aside, the, it seems like the board wants that. That's okay with me. But I was going to ask that, does this subgroup also deal with how are we transitioning the DAV? What's the current status with the DAV? I think part of the recommendation that I would expect the group would come back to this board with is just that. Okay. Okay. I think Stephen was volunteering, by the way, just to warn you. <laughs> My motion still says you and your appointee. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, d uh, but am I right? The board feels the new veterans agent would be the one to include. That's what, what for the fifth member because I do think there should be five. On I think that I'm, I'm weighing in my head whether or not, for the reasons that you're saying, whether or not we should ask to avail ourselves of the service of the outgoing veterans agent. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's not a bad that thought would be either. Ideal, I think. Yeah. Or want to have that so be let's, our first let's time? Yeah. Let's see how that goes. Let's see how that goes. Um, so I think I'm. Not Steve, I really like your idea about the t about the time frame. Um, Adam, what do you think? Let's. I, what do you think about putting a, on a deadline for this? Yeah. Obviously, we if we, back if to we the need board to right, if we need to exceed that, we can come back to the board and ask for an extension. But otherwise, um, I know I kicked around a time frame with you on a phone call, and I can't remember what we said <laughs> about how long we. I think, think we had talked it. about trying to have a recommendation by June. Okay. I'm I'm sorry. A, a, a decision prior to June to have action by June. Whether it be an RFP or, or something starting to happen. So how about ask for a report yeah, back for the first meeting in May? Yeah, I, th I think that's, that's yeah. Probably. And, and just one clarifying point, I just want to um, say that as a result of the previous town council going through an exercise, she came upon this situation that is sort of in legal status limbo, um, and we do have to make a decision on this. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that this is, a dis you know, um, we can't leave it like this in limbo yes, under the correct. current um, state laws that we have. So we do have to make a Absolutely. decision or decisions. Um, yes, so it would be financially irresponsible for us to right. not do right. something. I just wanted no. to clarify that. It wasn't any specific targeting or anything like Absolutely that. Absolutely not. Completely no. agree. All right, so Mr. Greeley has made a motion. Second. You're okay to invite the Rosa Sarvano? I am. Um, I'm going to decline to try to name someone right now, but uh, we're going to yeah. see if anyone wants to do it and go from there. Yeah. 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 Unless, yeah. Further conversation, discussion, thoughts? Adam, are you happy? Yes. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Five zero. <coughs> Mr. Greeley, public memorial. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, I would like to move that we, the Board of Selectmen, uh, refer to the public memorial committee for their um, advice that we uh, name the Selectman's Hearing Room to be the Charles H. Lyons Selectman's Hearing Room. Um, in my opinion, the present company, past company, living, dead, all other select persons uh, excluded, uh, I personally think Mr. Lyons, uh, up until a certain point in time, was the longest serving member of this Board of Selectmen served on the Arlington School <coughs> Committee, was the first 18-year-old elected to public office in the United States. Uh, his service on the MWRA, which was good and bad, his um, uh, initiation of the uh, Budget and Revenue Task Force, uh, and uh, the initial one on the five-year plan, which uh, has more to do with our AAA rating than any 
other elements, I believe, in this town, that we as a group, this board, the school committee, finance all, the town manager, uh, that's, it's just been invaluable as I would joke also in that room, Mr. Lyons talked more and required hearing by people more than any other uh, person in, in, in history. And I want to be clear, there's actually some confusion by people, which is, what's the hearing room, all right? We are in the selectmen's chamber now. The hearing room is out there in the hallway and it is where Budget and Revenue Task Force meets and others. So uh, I would like to make that motion and ask this board to support me and refer this to the Public Memorial Committee. I am very happy to second that motion. Thank you. Uh, any comment? Or I'll just say my comment is that um, my the first Selectman's campaign I worked on was one running against Charlie. <laughs> and I am really glad to support it still because it's uh, because I agree that because of the impact that he had on the town, you know, it, it was it was it was good. And at times, you know, I was I worked on people, but yeah, he he deserves the recognition for the part for the uh, the effort and the what he did for us. But president of NLC, you know, Charlie's Charlie, uh, Alan McLennan, I think it was Don Marquis saved CWG funding for us by getting into Tip O'Neill's office. And because Charlie was not to be denied access to Tip O'Neill's office, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, 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 not a perfect human being, and I truly love him, uh, president of NLC, but he did sometimes attack the person instead of the issue. But there's so many issues that I really believe affordable housing, and there's just so many ways that uh, he impacted this community. I truly believe he deserves and I'm not big on naming things after selectmen. Uh, I'm really not, and, and have three things in this town are named after Greeley, so certainly there's enough Greeley stuff out there. But we haven't in the past done a lot of things identifying selectmen, because I, I really don't think we should. We're a board, and we act as five individuals, but it's the board. We are the executive branch of this government, uh, along with Adam and, and um, uh, but, you know, we have now done something for uh, Peg Spangler down in Town Hall, and uh, I'm just determined and feel something should be named for Charlie. Shut the hell up, Kevin. So I make that motion. Yeah. I, I think it's appropriate. I mean, uh, I think Mr. Lyons actually had a moniker which has kind of faded away with time, which was the five-year plan was, was referred to as the Lyons plan for a number of years when it was first rolled out. So I, I, I wholeheartedly support the motion. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Utility Pool Working Group. First, I want to apologize uh, to the com uh, group for um, getting this uh, the document to you late. It just sat in my inbox, and I forgot to forward it until um, uh, this morning. And I see we have a member in back. Uh, do you want to talk, or do you want me to talk? <laughs> Thank you for helping out. For, so uh, Dick is um, being shy in the back, but he is the person who's doing a lot of work on, or sorry, excuse me, Richard's in the back doing a lot of work on, uh, he, he's been doing a lot of the heavy lifting on this, on this working group. And so uh, Julie, Richard, and Robert, uh, we had a meeting most recently, uh, it's either late November or early December, and this is a report they put out. They've made some progress. There were some polls in particular that have been uh, moved along. And uh, they've made some progress in identifying where the problems are. And but in, in particular, you'll notice that like we had, there were actually, so uh, uh, you guys know the system where the, the polls get into this database and then there's, there's somebody whose court the poll is in. And we actually did have a few polls that were in the town's court. And once uh, that was pointed out, they rapidly moved out of the town's court into the other one. The poll, the truly hideous one at Edgerton Road has been uh, in Mass Ave has, has gone away. But I think that the big thing that I feel like the group has taken away, and you can see this in the report, is that uh, it's hard to get the data into the Verizon database. There are double polls that we know about that they tell Verizon, and then Verizon doesn't get them into the database. And then we have to go back and tell them again, no, you really still have to get this. And the actual number of double polls has declined a little bit, and they've, as in some have been created and some have been, but it's only just a couple of them. And really, we've got this data problem that, uh, that we can't resolve. 
And so I think that the step for us to take going forward is, um, to, is, is to take this up with Verizon and say, the biggest obstacle we have to re removing this problem is the fact that the poles aren't getting into your database fast enough. What are you going to do about it? And so I guess I'm looking for the board's support in heading in that direction and seeing if there's any other comments we might have. So moved. Yeah. Thank you. Second. Uh, did you have an additional? Just okay. No, yeah. I yeah. Richard, do you want to come on up? Um, Thank you for all the work you're doing on this group. Um, I have made some progress with the different companies. I have been after Verizon since December to get to find out. I've sent them 32 of their own forms on polls. Seven made it into the database. 25 have not. For the third time to, uh, this afternoon, I spoke with <coughs> the public relations person, and he's going to try and find out if they still have them. Um, I sent them to him. I sent them to someone else. We got chewed out for that, so I sent them to him because that's the right way. He sent them to a middleman. They never left his desk, so he's out of the middle, and he's going directly to the source. But um, it's improving, and thanks to you, I did get contacts or found out where to go to get the contacts, and um, so I've done. Uh, I've got a contact at Comcast. They responded in a day to my one particular one. Um, RCN was a little different. They're NSTAR. They were owned by NSTAR or something. It's a separate group, but it's NSTAR. And um, the town, uh, Mike, has been great. I went to see him, finally caught him. And uh, he took care of a lot of the street lights. And um, who else? The fire alarm. The fire chief. So, um, I've got the contacts in line now, and I've just got to get the polls in the database again, like you're saying. Now, hopefully I'll hear from him tomorrow, because he was sending a letter to somebody's boss or something. There's one poll I've been chasing since June. Someone gave one of the residents my name and number, hmm. and since June he's been trying to get it out of the edge of his driveway. I got it all the way down to just pull the pole out, but it hasn't gone yet. But hmm. he's working on that too. Other than that, um, you know, once we get them in the database, they seem to be moving. They're all working on them. There is progress every month. This month they took down s six polls, but only it only showed one because they set five. So there's five new ones in there, but six are gone. And uh, he's got roughly 25 towns to deal with. And you know, half the manpower we used to have in the old days, so or less. But they are working. All of the companies are working on them. It's just that you know, they have to do it in order, so they're all held up. You know, Verizon is held up until everybody else gets off. Thank you. Joe? Thank you. Uh, thank you for your work on this. Uh, it sounds like uh, th it takes a lot of persistence. <laughs> um, <laughs> You say they, they do them in order. Is it in order that they actually get added to the database, or do they? Ha how are they prioritizing um, which ones they, they take up? When the Verizon is the maintaining yeah. company here for 99% of the polls. Sure. When they set a new poll, they make out this form that I have. They have the that's it's their form. Yeah. Listing all of the attaches. They put it into the database. It automatically goes down the list by the position on the poll. The top people have to transfer first, oh. the end staff, <coughs> normally. And then fire alarm, but there's problem now, there's private cable companies in between fire alarm and phone company and so right, forth. Right, so yeah. each one has to go down the line. And um, usually the phone company is the last, well, usually the last one to transfer, although if they can, they usually do it when they set the poll. But they have to come back and take, hopefully, just the top down. Yeah. But like this one that uh, I've been trying to get done was a relocation out of the edge of the driveway. So the whole pole is still in the ground. Yeah. That has to be pulled out also. But basically, it's from top to bottom. Right. And, and so we have a physical list then of all of these poles. So you say it looks like you were able to get the list from, from them. But do you have to ask for it each time? You don't have any... I don't have access to it. No, I asked to get access um, to the database, just read only even. 
that isn't happening. I don't even know who she was, but certainly the nasty ram, but <coughs> that won't happen. So I can only get what I can get, and then I try to compare. <coughs> but uh, only through, you know, a few of the people that I knew. Yeah. I think that that access is exactly part of the stuff that we're pushing for, because I was talking to Adam earlier, and uh, the <coughs> building inspector has access to the things that are in, uh, the ones that are in our course, but mm -hmm. doesn't even have access to the global picture of Arlington. So the thing that was in, uh, so we, we, we've gotten these emails that have the list of the actual polls that is obtained from Verizon, but we don't have official access to the database. Right. So that's part of what we need to, so that he can push right. people along. Yeah. And, and Mike, I think they all get an email, uh, the names people for the different companies when it's added to the database. Right. And uh, Mike Burns gets the, uh, gets the ones for the fire alarm and the street lights. <coughs> uh, he gets the fire alarm, and I'm not sure who gets the street lights, because that's now, it's yeah. gone through every employee in the town's hands, <laughs> and nobody wants it. <laughs> so it's gone to the uh, public works now, but uh, so he gets them now. Thanks, because I think we had said initially when we went down this path that the next time they're coming in front of us, uh, you know, with a request, we want to have this list in our hands to to wave in the faces and, and just you know ask what, what's up, what's up. And I think there's, yeah, I, you know this, but uh, yeah, I want to want to get I want to attend those too and get a name, yeah, <laughs> and a face. And Excellent. Thank them you them for your work on this. Uh, Diane. Um, just to leave on the table with the committee music, um, I do have contacts with Verizon and NSTAR that I can't necessarily give out their contact information, but if you really do hit a wall, whether it's getting polls onto the database or whether it's getting access to this list, whether it's somebody from this committee or whether it's somebody from the town manager's office or town department head, I'd be happy to make that phone call, but I don't want to... I mean, I can't necessarily, I mean, some people are aware of the contacts that I have with Verizon and NSTAR. Um, but I want to let the committee do its work. But truly, if you're hitting the stumbling block, just let me know and I will make a call. And I'll make sure that if you're not getting the right contact person's name or her son's um, and or the town manager, I'd be happy to help work on that and facilitate it. But I haven't done anything because that's the charge of this committee and you're on it. But mm -hmm. I don't want to sound like if you want me to make a phone call, I'll make a phone call. But it's basically that all. Kevin? I know no one there and would be of no help, but uh, Richard did an excellent job for us on the leaf blower committee. He's clearly doing an excellent job on this committee. Are there other committees we could interest you in looking at, Richard, by any chance? Is there, uh, do you have enough right now? I have more than I can handle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for how well you're handling it. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Adam, did you have any thoughts on that you wanted to add? or? You know, I, I would add the anecdote. Uh, you mentioned the poll at the corner of Mass and Edgerton. Uh, for, for whatever reason, that particular poll, uh, probably based on some resident or neighborhood input, became um, the passion of the fire chief to have that double poll removed. And, and at least from where I was sitting, and, and maybe um, you had some involvement in that as well, but from where I was sitting, it was literally the fire chief of our community spending inordinate amounts of time fighting with NSTAR and Verizon and Comcast to get that thing moved, that actually that it moved. And my point in telling you that is that that is a demonstration of the problem. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it should not take that much effort for this, uh, for this to happen. Representative Garbelli, listening to this one? <laughs> You're right. And, uh, <laughs> and the problem is that, you know, oh, well, this one has to get off first, and that one has to get off. Yeah. They've got 100 excuses, and there's no, you know, as, as you stated in the media, uh, one of the meetings there, there's no teeth in the law they passed, so, you know, there really isn't much. And to this day, there's no, you know, everybody's cut back, there's no employees, they got no money to spend on it, so it's an expense. It's no, no You're right. Um, so I, I, uh, I think actually you made a motion earlier, which was to uh, endorse, the Board of Selectmen endorse following up with Verizon and, yeah, that, in, yeah, yeah. and pursuing this further. Right, I've moved yours, yes. Yep. And uh, second. second. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you very much. Correspondence received.
to move her seat. Uh, Anthony Vogel, President of Friends of Robbins Park, is opposed to the fee charge for the use of meetings and rooms in public committees. And Elizabeth Carr Jones is retiring from the Transportation Advisory Committee. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second, I do want to discuss one of these. Joe. Um, right. And I don't know if Mr. Chaput is here on the, are you here on, on this or not, on the Robbins Farm? Yeah, we, we, I think we've all been, I know I have been contacted by quite a few people uh, regarding the uh, the new uh, user fees that have gone in for Jefferson Cutter and for senior. House and for the Senior Center. And I know that this is under the jurisdiction of the Redevelopment Board, but um, um, it would be helpful to get an update on it. I, I don't know the Chair's discretion if you wanted to recognize Mr. Chaput or not. Okay. I think he's on the Board of Directors that sent us this letter. Uh, I think it would be appropriate. Rolly, do you want to say a few words? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'll be very brief. Uh, Tony couldn't make it tonight. I think he's over at the CPA meeting, so we had to kind of split our duties tonight. Uh, the reason for that letter, obviously, was because of the consternation that we had when we received the notice from the planning department that there was going to be fees. Historically, bringing, going back a little ways, as a member of the uh, Friends of Robbins Farm, I was traditionally the guy who went over to talk to the planning department, make arrangements for a year to use the basement of the Jefferson Cutter House for our meetings, which we held once a month, and typically the meetings ran about two hours. And uh, the last time I went there, in, in perhaps late October, to set up for 2014, I was told that they couldn't really do it right away because there was some discussion relative to making some changes in, in the, the program. And of course, we found out after the fact that uh, yes, in fact, uh, the planning department in this wisdom determined that there was going to be some fees set for the rental of those rooms to private organizations like ourselves. Um, <laughs> we were not particularly happy about this, particularly when we initially found out that the rate was going to be $30 per hour. Now, if we ran a two-hour meeting, which we always do, <coughs> that ran over $600 a year. Now, I'm not telling you that we're broke uh, by any means. And in fact, we're probably a little better off financially than many of the organizations that wanted to be able to use those rooms. However, based on what Tony has told you in that letter, and of course a copy went to the planning department, um, we kind of felt that it was a disincentive to use a public place to hold a meeting that had a benefit to the community. I'm sure you're all aware that the friends up here at Robbins Farm have done quite a few things for the community at heart and, and pro bono, picnic tables and events that we hold and so forth. So, you know, we kind of felt it was a bit of a slap in the face to be told going forward that this was going to be a charge that just didn't make sense to us. So the reason for the letter from Tony was to ask you folks, can we arrange to get together, we, some of the organizations like ourselves, and the planning department and perhaps someone from the Board of Selectmen have come up with a resolution on how to solve this particular problem. We were not particularly happy with finding out in, in January, in January about this business without any prior knowledge uh, that we were going to be able to talk about it. So that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. To be honest with you, the meeting that we hold is about a, anywhere from 10 to 12 people, the members of the Board of Directors. We can hold the meetings in our house or somewhere else. So if, you know, if, the, if the town maintains its attitude that that's going to be the problem, you know, there's no incentive for us to continue to use it down here, which is kind of unfortunate because you know, the museum is over there, there's plenty of parking back there, and it works out very well for us. So that's where we're at. We'd like to see some, uh, let's, let's, let's talk about it. Or did you have a follow-up? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I, I hope that uh, during this discussion, maybe we can hear from the manager okay. some update on this. Um, I sort of referenced this at the last meeting um, two weeks ago that we had when we were discussing a diff different item and a $10,000 um, cost tag there. Um, I wasn't aware myself until I started getting phone calls, especially from the Senior Association. Um, and where we pride ourselves in Arlington as being, you know, community and volunteerism. Um, I would like to get from the town manager, you know, sort of why this decision was made. Um, 
I don't see why we need to sort of, to some of these groups, some people may say, well, we're just nickel and dime in them, but a lot of these groups and senior association and community groups, they're running on nickels and dimes. And I would hate to see those meetings go back into private homes, whereas, you know, we encourage people to come down and get involved in part of the process. So I'm really questioning this. Um, I have heard $25 per hour, maybe it's $30 per hour. You know, why we're doing that along with the Kelleher um, Center decision. Now, I, I will say I have, you know, I come from sort of a somewhat biased background, but also I do come from a background where, and I, this vo board is very cognizant of the points made in the Kelleher Center um, in terms of space, the clientele that that serves, um, moving um, that, uh, the higher rate that the Kelleher Center is pay paying versus other tenants. Um, I'd like to maybe have the town manager wrap all these discussions in, or if you feel it needs to be two separate discussions, but, um, you know, when we received the letter from the Kelleher Center about, you know, their rates and being moved, and um, I wasn't happy with that, and it's my understanding it's a planning department decision, but I would like to hear from the town manager. I, I can tell you, um, you know, my colleagues can speak for themselves, but we seem to be speaking with one voice. Um, you know, why the $25, $30 per hour fee, you know, for the senior association, for the Jefferson Cutter, you know, do we look at the user groups as well as um, I want to have the discussion about the Kelleher Center. That's a separate one because that's something that's really not sitting well with me either. Uh, so I, I don't, I, I, I always worry about putting you on the spot, so I'm going to invite you to either defer or weigh in or what do you want to? Um, I, I guess I'll weigh in. Uh, it's not an agenda item, so yeah, it, it is tough to always be prepared. Um, in terms of, I'll, I'll start with the Kelleher Center. That, that is really a completely unrelated item uh, to this matter, uh, but it is a matter that I've been meeting um, along with uh, the planning department and the management analyst in my office with the folks from the Kelleher Center, and I think we're going to work the resolution on that, um, on that matter. <coughs> in, in regards to this, um, this was uh, something uh, initiated by the planning department, uh, and as uh, I believe Selectman Kiro mentioned earlier in the discussion, this is under the jurisdiction of the ARB. Uh, so it's not something actually issued by the planning department or by the town manager, but rather the ARB. Uh, but really, they looked at two issues. Uh, most other space in town uh, already had a fee associated with it uh, for, for private groups. Uh, Fox Library, uh, I'm pretty sure all the schools have uh, a fee for, for usage for private groups. Uh, so there was a bit of an in inequitable situation happening here um, where these private groups were having access to um, the senior center as well as the Jefferson Carter House. Uh, one thing I'll say, I, the senior association is not part of someone who has to pay, pay fees. That, that's a bit of a different situation than what's happening here. Uh, also, there was a management issue. Um, the senior center, um, 23 Maple next door to it, and Jefferson Cutter House are part of an urban renewal fund that's supposed to be self-sufficient uh, and not uh, put, any, um, put any weight on the general fund. Um, so being able to manage the resource and have uh, personnel available <coughs> to, to open the building, lock the building, protect the building, make sure it's secure. Uh, there was, there, there were, 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 were no resources to do that, uh, and it was becoming more and more problematic to do so. <coughs> and and it, there is an odd relationship in that building where we have town offices, we have privately rented offices, we have wide open space uh, that's used for senior center programming, and we have night space that's used for all, all manner of private groups. So some enhanced management into the terms of the use of that space is what really prompted planning department to recommend it to the ARB uh, and to adopt these fees. With that said, uh, since the Friends of the Robbins Farm um, group and other groups have raised their concern, I've asked Carol Kowalski to take um, a look at whether or not uh, these fees are fair, if there's an ability for us to um, see, you know, are, are we just covering our cost or are we exceeding our cost? And if we are exceeding our cost, um, given, you know, we're a month in, um, let's see if we can make them more fair so the groups can uh, have a more reasonable ability to, to pay these fees. So I guess that's my, my take. Um, and thank you, Adam. And uh, I appreciate you looking into that with the planning department. Um, just some food for thought. Perhaps there's a way to reclassify certain groups as that are now considered private as, you know, a public-private partnership or you know, something where we can look at what the group is, you know, bringing to the town and if and how they're benefiting the community to then say whether or not they have to pay these fees or not pay these fees. So we kind of look what they 
the groups are putting into the community as opposed to just saying right at the fr uh, front door that you know you're a private group you have to pay so uh, I, and I think that it's a might have a, you know, a great return on our investment yeah thank you Kevin. Kevin. That. so did I uh, did I understand you to say the seniors um, group is not part of this because I thought it was a fifty dollar an hour hour fee they were going to have to pay to use the senior center was I misinformed on that? To my knowledge, that's not the case. Okay. The, Ar the ASA, the Arlington Senior Association? Arlington Senior Association may not hold the St. Patrick's Day party this year because it's a charge, $50 an hour. Is it, a, is it a special evening event? It's the okay. Saturday afternoon. Yeah, so event. that could be the case. Yeah. I mean, they're I mean they, they have rent-free space, run of the building all day. Uh, right. So I, I thought that's what, it'd be, uh, what, what, what you're what we're alluding to when you said they would have to pay for space. But if they have run out of the building, why do they, and this is just, I don't know, anyhow. Oh, it's it's, a, it's a, rent, a rent free non-existent lease they have. So if a total non-Arlington group wanted to rent a room, would they pay the same as this Robbins Farm uh, group to rent a room, the $30 an hour, or would they that would pay, be They would pay the pri private rate, it, depending on whether or not they're a private or non-profit. Right. So there is a tier, there's not, there's, so it's a different pricing for private versus non-profit. Correct. What's the private charge? What would the I want I don't have it in front of me, but I think it's fifty dollars an hour. I'd have to verify that. Yeah. I, I think they did lower it to twenty five dollars an hour for us. Yeah. The original plan was thirty dollars. That was the number that was quoted to me back in November, but yeah. by January it had dropped to twenty five. Well, I, I honestly can see both. I mean I, I these are public buildings I'd, and I'd like whatever degree we could to allow for the use of them. But you know, I, I can understand that, you know, uh, charges in terms of, you know, a, a janitor has to be on, you know, use of electricity, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I'd like to see it stratified so Arlington groups, especially nonprofits, get it for a lower cost than, than this. Uh, yeah, I guess my, my, I have a very similar thought, which is that I definitely, I understand the motivations, but I also think that the point about groups that push back or give to the town, if we're pushing them back into a house as opposed to embracing them and bringing out other people, that we are um, causing a bit of a self-inflicted wound. So, uh, uh, but I definitely trust the, you know, the planning department to, to take this advice and hear the arguments and see what, what comes out. And could could yeah. they also take into account, just on this senior St. Patrick's Day afternoon, um, I know I, when I work at behind the scenes, we do all the setup, we do all the takedown, we, you know, sweep the floors, we do all that. And for me, for something for the seniors who do come out to events like that, and it's really very healthy for them, because some of them, those are the only events to come out, to now say that that event that has continued in Arlington for I don't know how many years is going to be canceled because they have to pay the 50 the 30 or the $25 an hour, where we're doing all the, I shouldn't say we, where volunteers are, you know, when I've been there, I can tell you, we do everything ourselves and clean it. You've, you've yeah. been there. Yeah. So I'm just saying, can we look at those case and points and it doesn't really justify, you know, going um, there. But I think I'm hearing that from the town manager. I just hate to see stuff like that just be canceled because we're going to make 150 bucks or not. So at the moment we have a, mo we have a motion for receipt and a bunch of conversations. Is there any <laughs> other further thought? Um, I will. Uh, I was gonna. I was gonna make a comment on the other one. Elizabeth Carr Jones uh, retiring. Uh, this is actually a big deal, but we're gonna have further conversation about it. So I didn't. We're, we're gonna. We're gonna let it pass without too much notice right now and talk about it more later. But I'm sorry to, that she's indeed stepping down, and I'm hoping she's gonna remain otherwise engaged town meeting or other. But um, uh, an original member of that committee. But uh, so yes, the more to come. Uh, but so. I'm feeling we should refer and put this one on the manager too. The uh, the, uh, the, uh, the this pricing or, or uh, the the uh, room rental. Uh, that sounded like a motion to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> a very good one. <laughs> but I wonder to what degree. I think there's a huge problem with the coordination of all of our all of our meeting rooms across this town. And you know uh, this building is taken care of. 
in one way, the senior center, I think, by another Actually, way. Actually, this room is this building is not even taken care of one way. Different rooms are taken care of by different departments. S see what I mean? <laughs> and I think, I wonder to what degree that across all of our meeting rooms across the town, um, whether there could, whether a coordination of that, um, almost in a public calendaring, I don't know. Uh, but look into that too, would you? <laughs> We have a motion. Busy week for that. Uh, Joe? I'm almost Sorry. hesitant to even prolong the discussion. I'll just say this has always been a tricky discussion. We, we, we grappled with this in the school department when I was over there also because over the years, different arrangements had been, had been reached between principals and certain groups and such. And so uh, we did move to a very explicit tiering structure in, in the rates there, but the tiering structure well, like this tier, took into account whether or not, I, th I think it took into account whether or not residents were using it, but it also took into account the mission of the organization. And if the mission of the organization that was renting it was in some way consistent with the mission of, in that, in that case, the school department and, and, and education of Arlington kids, then there was that, that was taken into account in the tiers. So I think to the chairman's point, I mean, we do shoot ourselves in the foot when we have organizations that their mission is to contribute to municipal resources and, and so if that could, the mission if the mission can be taken into account and it's very difficult because somebody has to be the arbiter of that yeah yeah okay we have a motion from mr Greeley. is there a second 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 uh so we're going to refer the robbins um farm the global question related to the <coughs> robbins farm to the manager for and ask him to report back is there any further discussion on that one? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. We have a motion to receipt on Elizabeth Carr Jones. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Excuse me, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I need to go back to my people and tell them what happened here. Wherever we have our meeting, within a week or two. <laughs> I think. That what, what, what do you, you want to? What, what I should I tell them? I think what you should tell them is that. Um, we're really glad that you brought up the concerns that you did and we sympathize with a lot of them and we also understand the underlying policy and we've asked the town manager to look into it in more detail and see if there is a better uh, path available to us. So we, we can expect to make a concrete decision to change anything. <laughs> <laughs> but we can expect to hear from Adam. Adam, will, Adam we specifically told, asked Adam to report back to us but yeah. obviously that will be in public and we'd let you know. Sure, fine. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's important to note too that the decision to change anything really is with the redevelopment board, ultimately. On all properties? No, on those oh, specific properties. In those that are specifically under the jurisdiction. Huh? Well, did you catch that new bit? The, 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 just right. to be clear, that it is the ARB's ultimate decision on yeah. this. Okay. Right. Yeah. On some properties. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Public, uh, sorry, uh, new business. Um, only thing I just want to remind you if any of you can go tomorrow, we're having the retirement uh, collation for Bill McCarthy from three to four in the selectmen here. If anyone can make it, to go ahead. Thank you. No new business. Adam. You can tell Bill McCarthy he has a new assignment in his retirement. Getting up nice and close. Just just a few quick pieces of new business. Uh, Representative Garbley was here earlier tonight with us, and uh, just this past week he was able to include in a recently filed transportation bond bill by the House of Representatives $1.5 million for the resurfacing of Gray Street uh, and its sidewalks. So that doesn't mean that we've gotten the money for the project. The governor would still have to authorize uh, but it's a great first step, and we really appreciate Representative Garbley doing that for us. Uh, also aligned with that, I know uh, Representative Rogers is working to have uh, $500,000 included for a resurfacing and sidewalk repair to Pleasant Street. So we don't know if that was successful yet, but he's working on that as well. So our delegation is definitely working for us. Um, related to that, uh, I know I shared with the, the board in last week's packet uh, the governor's budget information, uh, local aid. Um, was not nearly uh, as good from the governor as we had expected. I know the MMA was very disappointed and I felt the same way uh, in that regard. Uh, but uh, at the MMA conference on Friday, Speaker DeLeo uh, spoke and addressed the entire MMA and said that the House would do better. Uh, so that was uh, pretty direct uh, from 
uh, from the House of Representatives that there would be better local aid numbers coming out in the House's budget. So uh, we'll have to stay tuned and see what that means. But a um, little update on, on state budget happenings, and that's all I have for today. Kevin? No, no Desmond, sir. Um, just very briefly, I'm not sure if it got forwarded to you all, but um, I've been working with the manager and uh, contacts over at DCR. Um, it seems like we finally have some agreed upon resolution for um, repairing, not <coughs> replacing or repaving um, the path, the street behind Sunnyside, as well as um, I feel encouraged uh, the town manager contacted Dan Dunn's replacement, who Dan is now running for Mayor Walsh's former seat. Not um, me, Dan Hunt. Oh, I mean, Dan Hunt. Oh, gosh. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. You're running for something, aren't you? Um, but anyways, um, Tony Barletta. But I made sure that the Selectman's Office um, has all that contact info and asked for to my colleagues. Um, and I feel confident come spring, definitely that road will be somehow patched, um, what hot topped or hot boxed or whatever, as well as um, I know the manager's following up on the ongoing maintenance and vegetation replacement. And I, I think we feel like we're making progress. I Frankly, Tony Barletta's response was some of the most responsive, or was the most responsive I think I've experienced with DCR, so I was, I was pleased with that. Yeah, and I will say there ha has been sort of a backdrop scenario going on, and um, I've been using that um, issue along with the town manager to make sure that we actually get this thing done, put to bed, and move on. So I, I feel confident that that will happen. Thank you. Thank you. Joe? Um, j just one thing, I was able to go up to, um, to the Audison Middle School the other day when uh, District Attorney Ryan came to town. Um, she's been um, presenting a, uh, a program on cyber safety for the, the uh, students. She and her uh, general counsel is an excellent program. I think we all know we had a, an unfortunate occurrence a couple months uh, up at the uh, middle school, so it was really quite, uh, quite timely. Um, and I want to give a big shout out also to the, the school resource officer, um, Porcello, um, also participated and spoke to the students. Definitely very, um, very approachable, uh, and I think a, a great guy to have in that in that spot um, for them. And so I think we all, you know, thank the district attorney for reaching out and uh, sharing the resources. And uh, it was a it was a very quiet group of middle schoolers, which you don't see very very often. So um, I, I think they got through. Thanks. No new business. Uh, I actually have three items uh, to talk about. First off, uh, Minuteman. The school committee did, in fact, vote. The Minuteman School Committee voted 13 to 3 to recommend a new regional agreement, which is <coughs> we're going to be asked to look at um, both as selectmen uh, of a recommendation for a town meeting. Uh, so Charlie Foskett represented Arlington on the regional agreement, the most recent committee, and he's being pushed to support that and he is ready to do so, but at the same time, he does not want to get out in front of the town and make sure, as in, you know, he wants to make sure that we're all on board. Mm -hmm. And so I'm putting him on our agenda two weeks from now, and he's gonna have a memo for us to talk about some of the key points. And I guess, I, I mean, I, I talk, talked about this two weeks ago, and I'll say it again, this is not, like, we're not gonna be ringing, th 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 there's no bells of joy about this regional agreement, but I, I, I suspect that we as a group will come to the conclusion that it's something that we should support, but uh, it's not going to be easy. And there's still, and uh, uh, there's also the regional agreement is just one part of like this bigger picture. And I think that at the next meeting, I suspect we're only going to be really ready to talk about the regional agreement, not the bigger picture. But um, you'll have some probably some dense reading uh, before uh, before we get to that in two weeks. Um, my other two items are just um, meetings that I went to of pub uh, private corporations that are, uh, serve Arlington pretty well. One was the Arlington Housing Corporation. Uh, Joe was there and Adam was there and we uh, got some speakers from people who benefited from the Arlington Housing Corporation who talked about the housing and the services that they got and they gave out their rewards. And uh, Tango is not open for breakfast, but it probably should be. <laughs> <laughs> they serve some really pretty good stuff to, in the morning. And the owner gave one of the best speeches he of the did day, actually. too. Yeah, who knew? Like, he used to work, in, was it Boston that he worked yeah. in? As a, uh, section help, eight, uh, yeah. doing section, eight, section eight. eight. Yeah, housing. So he was talking about the forms and how to help people fill out the forms. It was not the speech <laughs> that I expected uh, from him. But it was good. And, and just, uh, just before the meeting, um, next door, I was at the very opening of the Arlington uh, Land Trust meeting, or, uh, 
who are having their annual uh, cooperation year. So just worth uh, talking about these groups that I think are helping us out in, you know, in our costliness. Uh, you know, a lot of taxpayer money. All right, those are my three items. Move to adjourn. Yeah. Oh. Um, just, if we, just Sorry, before, I, I didn't mean to mention in our packets, um, I thought Adam's self-evaluation was, was an excellent document. I don't know if you're going to talk about it. I'm not, don't need to talk about it, but uh, so we are, do we have a schedule on when we need to fill out that? We do, and I don't remember what the time is. Okay. Um, I think it's two weeks from So now. I'm not late yet. You are not late yet. Uh, did we say, was it December or February 13th? I don't remember. I'd have to I, think, I think it was to get it to you um, by February. Yeah, I think it was by February 13th. They right. wanted it right. And so there's no change in any form, am I correct? We, 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 yeah. As we approved and it, yeah, exactly. exactly. We're going to vote on this, in, I think, on the 24th up. or something. Did they have yeah. to, you have to get it? That the goal was right. to have it, uh, the compiled right. document before the board by the 24th. Let me see if I can find uh, the board will indulge me. Thank you for reminding us, to be honest. Well, I just, <laughs> I just got to make sure I get it done on time. <laughs> Oh, he's looking for that. Can I ask how many warrant articles have we received so far? <laughs> In terms of citizen warrant articles or your standard total? Yeah. Yeah, just citizen that I actually have in my hands now, uh, two 10 registered voters, but I understand we may have maybe five more. I think about that, yeah. There's a, there's a number of uh, articles that are being put forth by various boards and commissions as well. Um, you'll be happy to know that I was able to dissuade at least one from an unnecessary article. So, okay. saving time where we can. Good. We might have another one because tonight someone that came in and told me they were coming in. I told them they had until Friday morning, so they should yeah. be adjourned. And we can yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I can't find it, but my, my recollection was generally so it was delivered now back to you in within two weeks so that you could work with Karen Malloy to compile it so it could be back before the board on February 24th, which would be another two weeks. So Valentine's Day, unless you hear otherwise. Move to adjourn. We have motions and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.